Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My name is Amy Bergstrom. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the Programming and Marketing Leadership Advisor within the Center for Leadership and Service. Welcome to Final Say. This is our closing celebration of student leadership at Highline, and we will have the opportunity to hear from three amazing speakers um, with our faculty, staff, and student speakers today. Before we begin, we would really appreciate it if you checked in the chat or the link is being shared in the chat to our check in form. Live automated captions are available. If they didn't show up for you, click the live transcript button at the bottom of your screen to view subtitles. And you can also click to view the full transcript of what was said earlier. As you heard, this program is also being recorded and will be available on the CLS YouTube page I've been in a few days. Um, we ask that you keep yourselves muted to limit background noise interruptions. And if you have questions for us or the speakers during the presentation, please use the chat feature. And with that, I will now pass it on to Gio for a land acknowledgement. Thank you, Amy. Um, so good afternoon, family. It's been a while um, before we move, we move forward with our program for today. I would like us to collectively take a moment to acknowledge all indigenous and first people of the land and space in which we live and breathe. For our community at Highline College, we recognize that we are an occupied Duwamish, Coast Salish, Muckleshoot, and Puyallup lands, and we want to thank all relations and tribes today as we prepare to hold space as a community. We recognize that all of us are joining this conversation from different areas, so we also want to invite you to reflect and think indigenous and first people of the land and space in which um, you are coming from. Thank you. And now I would like to um, invite LPT to, um, to our virtual stage. And also, good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Gio Mark Panello. I forgot to introduce myself. I am the Mentorship Programs Leadership Advisor at the Center for Cultural Inclusion. All right. Oh, sorry. Good afternoon, family. My name is Edwina Fui. I use she, her pronouns, and I serve as the Intercultural Center Leadership Advisor. Hello, all. My name is Georgia Peary. I am the Clubs Program Leadership Advisor. Hello, family. Uh, my name is Malai Luther Samifua. I'm the International Engagement Leadership Advisor. I'm going to move right along. I was like, is Amy going to re reintroduce herself? No, she's already done that. So good afternoon, all. Now is the time where we're going to transition to our guest speakers. Each year at Final Say, the leadership programming team, with the input of some amazing student leaders, invite one faculty member, one staff member, and one graduating student to say a few words of wisdom. These Highland community members are chosen because we feel that they have amazing wisdom, knowledge, and engaging things to say to all of you students as we conclude this academic year. I have the honor of introducing our next speaker, which is Laura Manning, and she is our faculty speaker this year. Laura has taught in our communication studies department for more than 20 years, mostly teaching the basic 101 course, public speaking, and intercultural communication. Laura says she loves that she is able to continuously learn from our amazing students, and she also loves helping our students learn to trust and celebrate their own remarkable voices. So let's all welcome Laura to our virtual stage. Take it away, Laura. Thank you. You guys are so kind to have me here. I'm so honored to be here and especially honored to share this space with Tessa and with Rashad. So much love to you both. So I have a little, I was asked to share some leadership advice and some wisdom. And so I borrowed some from some other folks and I'll share some of my own stories and hope that we arrive on that path. So I'm gonna start with telling you about a time and it was Christmas time, the end of 1999. And I was in Oklahoma, back home in Oklahoma, visiting my mom. And I was looking at coming back to Seattle and starting on my 10th year in graduate school. That's way too long to be in graduate school. And I was stuck. 
I was trying so, so, so hard to finish my PhD and I was a mess. I had started counseling. I had started antidepressants. I was doing everything I could to make it work. And I was just so stuck and so miserable. So I was there in my mom's guest bedroom and she had this little book there. It was kind of popular in the mid nineties and it's called 101 things you can do to simplify your life. And so I just picked that up and I was reading it and there's a section in it called simplify your personal life. And then within that, there is a chapter and it was titled, if it's not working, stop doing it. And I went, Arr. <laughs> like, this is not a message that I was used to hearing. Right. And so there was a line at the end of the first paragraph that said, really, I found that if something isn't going well, it's usually better to stop doing it. Like, whoa. And so then I have to add in this wisdom that I just got recently from Karamo on Queer Eye. And he was telling one of their clients, the more you hold on, the more you feel like you're failing. The burdens that you're trying to muscle through to make other people happy are weighing you down. And so it's the same message, the same idea. I mean, and of course, a great message is that hard work that is good is so valuable and pays off, but you know when it's working for the most part, that hard work. And I think we also know in our heart of hearts when we're a long way down a road that isn't ours, right? And we have this idea about sunk costs where I just kept feeling like I've got too much in this to quit. But what I finally realized was I have too much of my life left to keep doing this miserableness. And so in that moment, I decided to quit. And I was terrified because I equated quitting with failure. You know, quitters, they're failures. And so what I really came to realize was deciding to quit was actually incredibly brave. And so I wanna just pass on this message to you. That's my own hard earned wisdom is that hard work is beautiful. And if it's working for you, keep doing it. But if you're doing something for someone else or because you're afraid to let someone else down um, or because you're afraid of what people will think of you, if you can get off that road that's not yours because that opens up the path for you to do a thing that you're actually good at and that you actually love. So for me, what that meant was getting off that path meant that I could come teach here at Highline. I had been being offered a job here for a while to come. And once I finally came to my senses and left my PhD program, I was free to come here. So the second part of, so that was the first part of my speech, this message about learning to trust yourself and trust your own wisdom. And so uh, I got my job at Highline. I started teaching spring of uh, 2000 and I was getting ready that morning to come down and, and teach my first class here at Highline. I freaking love teaching. I was so excited. And as I was getting ready to come down here, <clears throat> my partner was at home getting ready to take our dog to the vet to be put down. She had had cancer for a couple of years. And that morning she woke up and she wasn't breathing very well. And so it was, it was time she needed to go and I should have gone I was I would have been able to handle it better than my partner did but no he was going to go do it and so I got on I-5 and drove down to Highline so I walked into my first classroom in building 17 and I sit and face my beautiful students and they're all smiling they're beautiful Highline students <laughs> gotta say friendly beautiful faces really more open than any I'd ever experienced at the University of Washington and so I looked around the room at these beautiful students and I leaned up against the table at the front of the room and I took a deep breath and I started crying <laughs> and any of you who have been my students are like well of course you did <laughs> that's pretty much been my mo ever since I've been here at Highline um, there's just something about this place that really demands vulnerability whether you're ready for it or not and so that's what Highline has been for me it's been a place where I have been more uncomfortable than I have ever been any any time in my life and it's also been decades of learning more than I have ever learned from any other people or place in my life so 
what I'm really talking about now is vulnerability and the power of vulnerability. And so the second bit of wisdom I'm, I'm gonna share is from Brene Brown, who is our vulnerability guru, you know? And she has this book called Daring Greatly where she talks about leadership. And she says that leadership is about taking risks and cultivating trust, which means embracing vulnerability. And so <clears throat> this whole, the whole message is, we have to be trustworthy enough to create conditions where people will trust us. And then like, that's just, that's communication studies 101. Who we are, we create meaning together. We have to be trustworthy and we have to be willing to trust as leaders, as members of communities. And so she says, in businesses, schools, faith communities, all systems, even families, we can tell a lot about how people engage with vulnerability by observing how openly we hear people saying these things. And so I'm gonna read you a list of things that both leaders and members of communities say when they're in functional, cooperating, vulnerable community. I don't know. I need help. I would like to give it a shot. This is important to me. I disagree. Can we talk about it? You know, it didn't work, but I learned a lot. Yes, I did it. Here's what I need. Here's how I feel. I'd like some feedback. Can I get your take on this? What can I do better next time? Can you teach me how to do this? I played a part in that. And I played a part in that. I accept responsibility for that. I'm here for you. I want more help. <laughs> Let's move on. I'm sorry. That means a lot to me. And thank you. And I know you guys do this. I see the communities that you create. This is what our leaders do all the time here at Highline. Um, and I'm gonna share one last uh, quote from her book where she's, she's talking about something that was written by Seth Grodin. He wrote in Tribes, We Need You to Lead Us. He said, true leadership is scarce because few people are willing to go through the discomfort required to lead. It's uncomfortable to stand up in front of strangers. It's uncomfortable to propose an idea that might fail. It's uncomfortable to challenge the status quo. It's uncomfortable to resist the urge to settle. If you're not uncomfortable in your work as a leader, it's almost certain that you're not reaching your potential as a leader. So I know too from my student friends who are leaders, you've been uncomfortable and you have shown up anyway and you have been brave. So that was my, my ideas for you today. Learning to trust yourself, learning how to be trustworthy and bring out and inspire trust in others, creating a space where it's safe to be vulnerable by being vulnerable. And so my final words, my final say, being vulnerable and being creating these trusting communities, it's how we have the courage to step away from paths that are not ours, even if we're a long way down them and make space to be on the paths that work for us. And trusting ourselves and trusting each other, it widens our community of who we see as valuable, real human. And that's the only thing that's gonna save us, my friends. Go be awesome. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Uh, thank you so much, Laura. Um, I think everybody's already doing it, but let's get some reaction. Show Laura our appreciation with our um, in the chat or with your little reaction. You rock, Laura. Um, thank you so much, Laura. So, Laura, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, it's um, my, I'm my my turn to talk right now. But um, if you have any reactions for Laura, you can put it in the chat for her. Yeah, thanks. Um, so. Whew. I feel like I'm excited to watch the recording and go back and write some notes <laughs> after that. I'm like, oh, I wish I was typing these things as it was going. So um, we are gonna invite our next speaker um, who is Rashad Norris, who is representing our um, staff.
today as our speaker. Um, Rashad currently devotes his time as the Director of Community Engagement at Highline, where he travels to elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, I think he just came from one right before this, community centers, libraries, and youth educational conferences to speak with youth and young adults about the importance of reading, education, and the process available to them to attend a higher education institution. He also has done educational workshops and given motivational presentations that uplift young people in the community through Black historical context, content. Rashad has extensive experience in working with young adults and young men of color, which has enabled him to build strong relationships with parents, guardians, and local community leaders. So let's invite Rashad to our virtual stage. Thank you. What's up, family? It's good to see you all. Man, I'm, 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 I rushed back to get back here because I just didn't want to be late. You know, I remember talking to Sister Amy and making sure she knows that I will be here. You know, this is something that I thrive, that I really get energy from. So I want to say that I appreciate the invite and being able to see you students and seeing, being able to see my other um, colleagues as well. Um, so my nugget today, uh, what I want to share with you is really, I just want to give you a quick story because I know that right now, we are all going through this pandemic um, and we are also going through racial and, and gender and identity and justice that we have all um, come across these past couple, this past year and, you know, this past week, shoot, these past two days, you know, we gave me shortening up for some of us. Um, and one thing that I've, that I've realized is that storytelling is something that we need to get back to where we can start to share each other's story to see how we can motivate and how we can come across a little bit more personable and a little bit, have a little bit more empathy. So we haven't been able to see each other, but I'm always open to share stories. So I just want to share the story with you real quick, and then I'm going to get into my five tools or five things that I had to go through through my transformation, hoping that you as students, you would do the same thing. Your story needs to be shared. And so I share this and I'm being vulnerable right now. So just know that this is something that I know that I need to share because somebody out there needs to hear this. And I will let you know this, that, you know, I've been in this position at our institution for the last 15, I want to say 14 years or so, and I've done outreach. Um, through my family, I am the first generation um, student, um, graduate student of college on both sides of my family. So I broke generational curses when it comes to the education factor. One thing that I didn't do is I didn't understand other factors that was generational that I felt trapped to, which was one of them was alcoholism. Um, my family going dating back was full of alcohol. Alcoholism was deep in our family. So it got a hold of me. And I will let you know that I was really attacked by alcohol while I was at Highline and doing this work of what I call outreach and community engagement. Now, because of my charismatic way of teaching and connecting with students, it was very easy for me to still become um, somewhat not drunk, but feeling real good and still being able to do this work. And it wasn't until I fell into some, some hardship around the DUIs and then my family started understanding that there was a bigger problem. All the hiding didn't do no, it did not do no good. And it wasn't until I had to get alcohol poisoning that I found out that, you know what, this may be something that I need to stop because there is no control at all. And some of us right now are probably deepening, deepening ourselves in some type of addiction because we've been caught up in this pandemic. And I've been talking to a couple of brothers of mine that have went back to that bottle because it was something that was very easy for them because of this pandemic and all the things that have been going on. So I share this with you because I just wanna let you know, I'm six years clean of being alcohol free. And it's something that I love to present to individuals just because of that is a mental strength that I had to gain and be able to understand that I have within myself. And I had to stop these curses and stop these things that have already been part of my community and part of my life and part of my family, part of generational um, curses that's been a part um, of my growth. And I had to learn that this was something that I had to really come in contact with, come, come in contact with and come to grips with that there was an issue and there was a problem. 
Now, I share this with you just because there are some things that I want you to understand that after I stopped that addiction and got clarity, my way of living has now become more fruitful. It has become stronger. My outreach and engagement has become stronger. It's more authentic. It's not something that I see that it was a job. This is something that I see that I it, it, it was given to me. This is my purpose. So as graduates, I want you to find your purpose because when you find your purpose, you would do this. You would do your purpose out of the goodness of your heart and you wouldn't have to really um you know, um, transform or do anything to make you feel like I got to find why I'm doing that job or doing what you want to do. I don't do that. No longer am I finding some type of um, some some type of transforming um, contraption to get me to do this job. I love doing this. That's it. So I tell you first to find your purpose and to know thyself. This is something that is an African proverb. These are my five tips that I want to give to you. Number one is know thyself. And this is an African proverb that has been given to me through my readings. And it talked about how if you look at the tree, if you look at a fruit tree, or any type of tree you want to look at, you always have your roots. And when you know thyself, you know your experiences, you know people who will influence you, you know where you come from, you know your places that have been instilled to you from you to get your strength from, know those roots. The second thing when you think about a tree is that trunk. That trunk is your value system and your belief system that you got from all of those type of those, those roots that are continue to be watered by your environments that you that you that you live in or that you that you um, converse in. And then those leaves, those branches, that's the way you show up. Always understand that, you know what, I got to go back to my roots. If I'm showing up a certain way that is not true to the values or the beliefs, you better go to your roots and figure out what is it that I need to start to really grasp that has already been given to me, that needs to be watered, it has been watered, that I hope is not paying attention to because I was toxic. And I need to find out what is it that I need to go back and figure out about myself to get me that, that strong belief, that, that value system and that belief system so I show up a little bit more authentic. So that's number one. Number two, you need to surround yourself with some positive people. Get you a strong circle. Get you a strong circle. I don't care what nobody says. There's something that I give to young people all the time. I said these to this young people today. I said, if you are the smartest one in your circle, your circle is not that damn smart. I'll say that one more time. If you are the smartest one in your circle, your circle ain't that damn smart. Now, ain't, I don't need no word, Laura. I know it is, you know, that's this street word, but it isn't that damn street. It's not that damn strong, smart. So always find a strong circle to be around. Always surround yourself in a strong circle. Not a square. Squares are hard to move. A circle, though, keeps it, when you push a little bit, it keeps it moving. So I ain't talking about no square. Get you a strong circle. Number three, three R's. You want to reflect on what you just did, reflect on what's going on, reflect on your actions, whatever you're doing. After you reflect, you want to respond because now you want to respond after you do your adjustments. Now respond with those adjustments. And then that last one is report out what you just did. How did you make those adjustments? What was it? How did it come out? When did it? When did you do it? Why did you do it? How did you make those adjustments? Always answer, always make those adjustments and always report out to yourself, what did I do to do better? So remember, you want to reflect on what's going on. You want to respond on making any type of changes, adapting, whatever you want to do it. Report out of what you've done. So now you have a blueprint of what was the way, what was successful when you continued um, through that challenge or whatever you're going through. Number four, this is most important. This is most important. You can't do this if you don't get no rest. You have to get rest. You have to do control, alt, delete. 
Everybody know what them three buttons do. Control, alt, delete, erases away everything. Now, I ain't trying to say get rid of your homework, get rid of any type of important documents. But when you control, alt, delete, you get rid of all the negativity. You get rid of all the toxins. You toxins. You get rid of all the negative thought. You get rid of all the negative people who are around you. You control, alt, delete, they're behind. You get them out. And what you need to do is you need to reflect and make sure you know who is around me? You may be control alt deleted. And that may be, that may have to be control alt deleted. This may have to be control alt deleted. That means you got to wipe it out. And so you have to do your good inventory on what's around you that's getting you to feel like, you know what, I'm not getting no rest. It may be that phone, it may be some type of video game, it may be watching movies. Whatever it is, control or delete. Get your rest. You need to get rest. You need to get that strength. And the last but not least is just breathe. Just breathe. Man, and I ain't talking about breathe. I'm talking just breathe. Just be thankful. Just be thankful. You know, and I just tell you all this. When I went through what I went through my transformation, and now I start to live through my five value factors that I put together for myself, my clarity once again, my purpose is there. I see it. I see it. My circle starts to grow. Abundance starts to happen. You know, attitude starts to fester. Your behavior starts to become more positive. Your mental ability, your, 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 your stability to be able to communicate, you know, it starts to be, it, 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 it's, it's, it's so motivating. You, you, you don't spill out nothing negative. You want positive for anybody who's around you, you know. So I would just tell you, look at these things that have been generational curses that have been in your family for some time and pick up on it and see if you are catching, latch it on to any of those and you need to control or delete. Like I said, alcoholism was mine. And I'm vulnerable enough to say that, you know what? That's no longer my issue, no longer my problem. And it feels so good. And so I would tell you, control or delete. I know y'all like that. Control or delete. Surround yourself with good people. Reflect, respond, report out, and then get some rest and then just breathe. And with that being said, students, I am so proud of you. All of my first generation students, I wanna give you an extra shout out because you already broke those generational, cur those generational curses already for being a first generation student. So I wanna give you a special shout out. Keep climbing, keep moving. And to everybody else, please stay safe, stay healthy. And with that being said, I'm Brother Bashad and I approve that message. Wow, beautiful, Brother Rashad. Thank you so much. Um, I got my notes over here, but yes, definitely the control alt delete. A lot of folks are responding <laughs> to that in the chat. So um thank you so much, especially wow, the the rest part. I'm like, hmm, I think I'm scheduled for a nap after this program. So, you know, <laughs> gotta restore and uh knock these finals out. But we appreciate you so much for sharing your wisdom. Um and yes, folks are showing love in the chat. Uh, thank love. you so much again. All right, family. Well, we have, you know, one more speaker left, folks. Um, so are you ready? Please throw that, throw your responses in the chat as I'm pulling up my notes. Um, I have the complete, the, I just have the privilege and honor of introducing this next person. Um, I will not cry. I, I will cry later, but I won't cry right now. But super excited to introduce our student speaker of today. Uh, Tessa Hunt is a student preparing to graduate from Highline this quarter with a bachelor's degree of applied behavioral science and youth development. They are also a student leader in the peer facilitator position at the ICC or the Intercultural Center, um, where they held various social justice themed conversations around LGBTQIA+, um, BLM, and COVID-19. They also helped um, to plan the LGBTQIA and Disability Justice Week committees um, last summer. They intend to become a clinical mental health counselor after completing their degree 
um, and work and hope to lead a legacy that will inspire others to pursue the community values of Highland College. And so Highland community, please show us some love and let's welcome Tessa Hunt. Woo! Go Tessa. Well, thanks everyone. Um, I, I resonated so much with Laura and Rashad's um, speeches. I couldn't believe it. I, I'm, I was going to cry like at least a couple times during both of your speeches. And I think you'll all see why. Um, I, I, I wrote out my speech, so I'm going to be reading off of that. Um, but I hope it still kind of flows naturally enough. Um, so I want to share a little bit of my long journey that I took to get to Highline and what this past year has shown me about myself. I love this school and all that it stands for, and I have no idea where I'd be today without having found this incredible community of caring, compassionate, and understanding individuals. My journey to Highline had been interesting, to say the least. I moved to Washington from New Mexico uh, six years ago to pursue a degree in Japanese linguistics and that was at the University of Washington in Seattle. I intended to become a translator in many different languages, but this didn't really turn out how I expected. Once I moved here, I felt really isolated and I struggled to form a community at UW. I was hit with a huge and gloomy depression that just wouldn't go away no matter what I did or how hard I tried. But I kept going, I kept fighting, I did everything that I could for my mental health. I, really just had to believe that the numbness of it would go away someday. And I demanded that I graduate and make it out of UW no matter what. And so I did that, even though it was the most challenging thing that I've ever done. And even though I nearly failed a translation class my senior year. After this, I decided that translation must not be for me or more reasonably, the effort I put in to learn this skill just hadn't paid off how I expected. And so I actually had to let it go, at least for a few years, um, after attaching too many negative associations to it. And this was incredibly difficult for me. And I decided that after my degree from UW in a subject that I just didn't know how to apply to the real world, that I would probably never go back to school and never have a true career. I got customer service and temp work jobs, and I felt as lost as I'd ever been in my life. But for some reason, I still had this glimmer of hope, and I didn't want to go back to New Mexico because I felt that Washington still had a lot more in store for me. The Puget Sound area gives me access to many more things than my hometown ever could. And as devastated as I was by feeling as if I lost my passion, I decided I would keep going and look for more options. The temp work got tiring and demeaning. I realized that there needed to be some, some type of change for me to reach my fullest potential. And this is when I started brainstorming. I thought, I like to travel and I'm already working in the hospitality field. Maybe I'd like to be a flight attendant. Maybe I can study up on languages and it'll make me a good candidate for that type of work. And I can use all my skills in combination. But then I also thought, I really like helping people. And while hospitality is supposed to represent this, I could be helping people with even more challenging things than just what drink they'd like on their flight. And don't get me wrong, I also know that being a flight attendant would have been very challenging, tiring, and take a whole lot of work to do the job well. But I knew that it wasn't quite for me, so I just kept thinking. And this is where I got some inspiration from my mom. Um, my mom, coincidentally, she had found her dream job at the age of almost 60 as an archivist for the state of New Mexico. And so she told me about this and she recommended that I look into state jobs because she wished she had done that sooner. The fact that she got her dream job so late in her life and seeing how she had navigated her passion, even though it took a while, quite a long time actually, it inspired me to do the same and keep looking for my own. It brought me to tears that we all have so much potential no matter where we are in our lives. I had always been pretty interested in psychology, so I looked up relevant jobs with the state that would require the application of that type of knowledge. I thought I might be good with helping others with mental health after having gone through some difficult times myself. I wanted to pay it forward 
from the people who had helped me before. The keywords that kept coming up on my search were behavioral science. This job requires a behavioral science degree. And I didn't really know what that was, but I knew that it had to do with human services. So I was all in. Um, and this is when I found Highline. My final search was behavioral science programs in Washington and Highline came up. And this school was just down the street from where I lived in Federal Way. I couldn't believe it. So I went to campus to check it out for myself and get more information. I scheduled an appointment with an advisor and she helped me get all of my transfer credits lined up so that I could graduate with a bachelor's of applied behavioral science in youth development in only two years. This was really a grim glimmer of hope for me, the light at the end of the tunnel. And I was ready to start in fall of 2019. I hoped that this degree would be applicable to the real world a little bit more than my previous degree was. And now I'm on my beginning steps towards becoming a clinical mental health counselor. So how did I gain academic success and sustainable excellence here at Highline? Well, one of my biggest goals for attending here was to get engaged with the community. I know very well that I need to take full advantage of my time at Highline and this was for the greatest chance of enjoying my experience more than my previous one at UW. I was incredibly anxious that my experience would be just another repeat, but fortunately the school is very different and very community centered. So we all support one another and we look out for each other's well-being. I attended as many events as I could when Highline started that fall. I decided to volunteer for Thunder Week and made a few new friends. And this is when I found the Intercultural Center and started my journey in the Connect program. In addition to this, my wonderful now supervisor Edwina reached out to me at one of these events, asking me if I'd like to apply to be a peer facilitator and work at the college. I remember I got the call that I was chosen for the position literally on my birthday, January 17th, and that was of the year 2020. And through my position, I've truly learned what it means to be a social change agent and how to hold challenging conversations. I've also learned what it means to network and what it means to have the most supportive team of pro staff and coworkers on the planet. And I really owe it to Edwina and Doris for looking out for me and letting me know that it's okay to take a step back and enjoy some self-care when personal matters just get to be a bit too much. And I now know that my well-being comes before anything else. And the lessons that I've learned through this journey is firstly, that it's okay not to know what you want to do. And secondly, it's also okay to know what you want to do and then later have to change your mind. And you're able to make huge differences along each step of the way. I've also learned that it's just fine to take as much time as you need in order to reach your goals. And my journey at Highline has been incredibly fulfilling just in the fact that I was able to build such a community and even become a student leader here. I will cherish the connections I made here for years to come. I feel that I've gained so much more confidence that I'm able to succeed if given the properly supportive environment. And I also had something more to comment about this year in particular. As you all know, we had to switch to online and all of us went through struggles. Something I found to be a monumental lesson of this year is that we can look at the negatives and we can sit and dwell in it and we can make a little bit of time for that, especially if there needs to be some problem solving or work that needs to be done. But our goal, it really should be looking for the positives and finding our own ways to make the most of each situation. We each needed to be capable of knowing when to reach out and ask for help and when to step up and, and help someone else. We all need each other in different ways and in different times. That's why community has been so essential for me. Even though it had to be online, I was extremely dedicated to do anything from conquering my Zoom fatigue to finding ways to navigate and solve my personal problems and the limitations that the pandemic brought to me. To all the students here today, please enjoy every moment that you have with Highline and take advantage of the variety of student programs and leadership opportunities because I know that thanks to my participation, I'm going to look back on and miss my time here very much. I'm so honored to have been able to present this speech to you today, and I hope that you all learned something from me. So thank you.
Thank you so much, Tessa. There are so many things that I want to say, but we want to say thank you. Like, what a beautiful way in closing. Actually, can we give it up for all three of our speakers today, family? Please, yes, continue to show love in the chat. Um, I apologize if my connection goes out. It kind of froze a little bit right before I started talking, but I'm still here. So um, just take a moment to think about what each speaker has said. Um, I'm over here trying to jot every note down. I'm so glad that this is recorded so we can reference later. But some of the things that stood out to me that each of our speakers said, and they all had interconnected like um, messages is, you know, Laura opened this up and, and shared her journey. But um, the quote that Amy also put in the chat, um, deciding to quit was incredibly brave. So whatever journey you're on right now, whatever point you're in, um, it's okay to change. As Tessa was also saying, it's okay to change your mind, choose a different pathway. Um, and man, I'm like, I thought I was like, oh, should I just quit now, school, or just stay here until I figured out? I don't know. There's a lot of great messages. I and mean, even um, Brother Rashad's five points of, you know, surrounding yourself with positive folks. Tessa also talked about building community, um, reflecting, responding, reporting, and also coming back to self and remembering to rest and breathe. And so, so many incredible nuggets of wisdom. Thank you so much again to our final safe speakers. Um, closing out with Tessa, I know um, as they were talking about joining and, and it started out with volunteering, just making that decision to want to get involved um, because of their previous experience. And so that was courage right there, Tessa. And so thank you so much for getting connected because we are actually now transitioning into recognizing folks who continue to stay connected virtually in this last year. Um, and so now we're transitioning into recognizing students who took a moment, you know, they have attended five or more programs, got to reflect on those experiences, um, and now they're gonna be recognized for um, their leadership throughout this year. And so um, for folks who may not know um, about the Connect program, um, this program really is a community of students engaged in leadership opportunities um, across Highline College. Students explored something new while building skills and confidence. They made connections with other students and campus resources. Um, this year specifically, we offered a monthly Thunderbird Thursday, which is the first Thursday of every month. And so um, each of the different topics focused on different ways of looking at leadership, right? Um, and so we got to engage in community, challenge our own definitions. How did we define leadership? What did that look like within our own communities? And we got to share that in these uh, monthly workshops. Um, and so at this moment, we want to take some time to celebrate um, folks, like I mentioned before, who um, did five or more reflections. And we want to just say thank you to everyone who participated. I know there's a few more folks who are finishing the reflections and you too will get your certificate um, once you complete that. But we just want to say thank you, as Tessa mentioned, you know, entering this time of being in community remotely, like we all had to figure out what that would look like. And so we just want to say thank you for continuing to show up, um, even on top of taking classes or working full time, working extra jobs, you know, still being able to spend time with each other is powerful in itself. And so we want to take a moment to celebrate each of you. And so I'm going to invite um, my bro or Uncle Lupe to help me um, in reading names and just congratulating our students. And so I'm going to make this full screen because I think my notes are on here. Hi, Weena, how are you? I'm good, Ying. How are you? Thank you for being here. Yeah, that that scoot that background. How can I get that? Um, we can send you a copy of it in the chat in just a moment. But we're gonna take a some time to recognize some folks, if that's okay, Ying. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. So our first student we want to recognize is Alona Ischenko. Woo! And feel free if y'all, you know, you can definitely unmute, cheer with me, or cheer in the chat. However, you decide reactions. So. That's Alona. Thank you. Also, next we want to recognize Anita Wambui. Congratulations, Woo! Anita. Woo! Thank you. Next we have Daniela, and I apologize if I pronounced your last name wrong. Is it Vidal? Vidal. Congrats, Daniela. Woo okay, my voice is starting to get tired. <laughs> We appreciate you. Take your breaks. Take your breaks. Take some water. Oh, we need. We got James Cariti. 
Go James. Congratulations, James. Genoa Wingo. Congrats, Genoa. Awesome. We have Marissa Banuelos. Yeah. <laughs> Mohammed Juarez. Woo! Ahmed, congrats. Congratulations. Ahmed, my man. <laughs> we have Maya Leonard. Congratulations, Maya. The Woo! GOAT. <laughs> Noah Lindborg. Woo, Noah. Yes, sir. Next, we have Rhonda Alan. Alane, sorry. Congratulations. Congrats, Rhonda. Next, we have Samantha Atienza. Congrats, Sam. Mm -hmm. We also have Samantha Sabrine. Congratulations. Woo, CBC. Saini Wooly, where you at, Saini? Woo, congrats. <laughs> this is ma'am. Thank you. Congratulations, Saini. And we also have Tessa Hunt. Congratulations, Tessa. Woo-woo. Ying Tran, I think I heard you, Ying. Where you at, Ying? Woo. Woo. <laughs> Thanks, Tessa. We also have Johannes Wubu. Congratulations, Johannes. Congrats, Johannes. Uni Choi. Woo! Go Uni! Hey. Congratulations. Well, all right. Um, boss folks, if y'all want to hire me to be a commencement name reader in the future, feel free to do so. JK, congrats, congrats again to all of our Connect program participants. We want to say thank you so much again, student leaders. Um, we look forward to seeing you continue to engage with us in the fall. Again, um, for folks, I know, you know, if you are almost done with your reflections, we'll still make sure that you get a certificate and we'll make sure to send for everyone who was recognized today. Um, you should get an email with your official file. So congrats again. And I'm going to pass it over to Lupe. I think what you meant is me, Edwina. Yeah, it's uh, I'll take over. That's okay. Um, again, congratulations to all of our Connect program um, participants um, for finishing completing that. And now we would like to acknowledge all of our student leaders from across campus. So we'll begin with three ambassadors. Feel free to unmute yourself. Actually, why don't y'all unmute yourself and like, let's all give them a clap, you know, round of applause. Let's go, Trio, where you at? Let's go, Trio. Hey. Hey. Oh, William, Zoom is so awkward. <laughs> and then and next we have our Passport Peer Mentors. Woo! Woo. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Yes, if you see, like, if you recognize the name there, unmute yourself and, you know, give a shout out. Um, we have our Campus View Student Housing Residential Assistance, our RAs. I see Martin there again. Let's go. All right. The next, we have our Career and Student Employment Center. Ooh. for helping our students connected and finding jobs. Yay! Yes. Um, I'm waiting for the slides. Oh, there you go. Tutoring Center, the place hey. where you Much love to all the tutors. Yes, yes. Right. can I come visit y'all? Thank you, tutor. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> <Great> tutor. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I believe we have our math center. If I'm not yes, our math hey, resource. Hey, math um, yes, uh, I wish I used the math resource center when I was in college. Right, same, same. 
And then writing center, this I need right now. Because with all this final paper that I have to write before next week, yo. <laughs> yes. Yay, and then we have our <laughs> Achieve Student Leaders. I don't know who's next, but it is Achieve Peer Navigators. Oh, we have three of them. Oh, okay. for the navigators. And then Advising and Transfer Center. And then up next, um, I think this is the one, okay. Moja Leaders. Woo! Let's go. Yay. 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 And then I believe that's it, but I do want to read out all of our um, departments that have student leaders in there. Ooh, it is not loading on my thingy. <laughs> so we have our associated students of Highland College, community budget coordinator, um, community leadership consultants, student clubs and organizational leaders, community resource consultants, global student ambassadors, marketing outreach and design, ICC peer facilitators, same consultants, Highland navigators. Oh, I just realized it is a lot to read, but that's okay. I have the energy. Achieve peer navigators, outreach ambassadors, transition center student leaders, academic success center tutors, MESA AEW and tutors, public speaking center student leaders, Umoja student leader, and a PC student, three ambassadors, three O tutors, K student leaders, oh, I'm gonna catch my breath, Thunderword, Arcturus, veteran student leaders, women's program student programmers, honor student leadership team, and last but not the least, Union crew. Thank you so much. Um, Good reading. Good reading um, too. Special part of our um, the work that we do at Highline. So again, thank you. And now I would like to invite Lupe, I believe, for um, introducing our, our yeah, our next course. Oh, hold on. What was that? I mean, I did I miss a slide? <laughs> Okay, like shout out to our um, this year's uh, CLS and CCIE course services leadership team 2020-2021. Um, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm prepared to read all of their names, but here they are anyway. Um, thank you so much. Without you, we wouldn't be able to do all the work that we do at the center. So we appreciate you and thank you for being part of the center. And with that being said, I would like to invite Lupe to introduce our next core, um, next year core student leaders. Awesome, thank you, Gio. Great job. Um, as Gio mentioned, we really couldn't do our work as LPT without our awesome student leaders. And so we are so proud and happy to announce our new core team for the 2021-2022 uh, academic school year. So. The first person that we want to recognize is Maya Leonard, Associate Students of Highland College Speaker of the Caucus. Show some love. Uh, we have Kevin. Uh, hey, we have Kevin. Uh, Pam, uh, who's going to be our Community Budget Coordinator. We have Iman Abinor and Matt Wells, who will be our Community Leadership Consultants. Show some love. We have James Kariti, uh, Dmitry Kotonivsky, uh, Community Resource Consultants. And then we also have Martha Giture and Mina Moriguchi for our Global Student Ambassador, that's my team. And then we have Mila Akeza for the Intercultural Center Peer Facilitator. And then we have an amazing team for our Marketing Outreach Design team next year. We have Noah Lindbergh. Audra Perkins, Megan Smith, and Janelle Wingo. Let's show some love. Yes, a stack my team. So y'all better get, get them uh, stuff submitted so they can start working. Uh, we have Samantha Atienza and Patrice Harris for our service and mentorship engagement consultants. Also know it's the same. All right. 
congrats to our new uh, student leaders for CORE. Amazing. Yay, we're so excited to um, work with our CORE team for next year, as well as um, student leaders across Highline in all of those different places. I know everyone's going to be welcoming new student leaders to your teams, and we are psyched to um, get to connect with you all in a few months after we all take some nice restful summer months before then, but we're super excited to um, see everyone in the fall. So, wow, I can't believe we've made it here. We made it to final say, and now we've made it to the end of final say. Um, I just have to say, I feel so refreshed from hearing our speakers today. Um, thank you so much, Rashad, Laura, and Tessa. Uh, like, seriously, I know we said it already, but like, need to go back, watch these again. I feel like anytime I'm feeling like I need a little inspiration, I'm just gonna like, pull this video up and watch it all over again. I really appreciate it. And I'm gonna be like Edwina and take notes because I didn't do that the first time. Um, so yeah, just thank you so much. Thank you to all of our speakers for um, just really supporting uh, our students here at Highline, just for everything that you do to make um, Highline the special place that it is. And thank you to every single one of you who is here for being part of our Highline community this year. Um, we are just excited to celebrate your contributions as leaders in our community, but I also want to remind you that who you are matters aside from anything that you do. Your presence alone makes an impact on each of us. So thank you for being here and just thank you for being at Highline this year and being a member of our community um, that your presence um, is important. So thank you. Um, for those of you who are continuing on at Highline next year, we are excited to connect with you again in future quarters. And for those of you who are graduating this year, we will be celebrating you at virtual commencement and the Cross the Stage event in two weeks from today. I can't believe that. Um, congratulations on making it to this point in your journey. And I think with that, we're going to wrap it up. So thank you again to everyone for coming. And we will see you soon, wherever that's going to be.